Today I'm going to talk with you about existentialism and psychotherapy. I particularly want to talk with you about a form of existential psychotherapy that we've developed and that we teach and practice here at the Boulder Psychotherapy Institute. It's called Applied Existential Psychotherapy, or AEP. We say applied because we're interested in applying the insights of existential philosophy to the practice of psychotherapy. We're not interested in talking philosophy. In fact, our therapy is very experiential, it's very body-oriented, it's very grounded in the here and now. However, the insights of existential philosophy do guide us in a lot of what we do, and we're particularly influenced by the philosophy of Jean-Paul Sartre. I studied Sartre with Hazel Barnes, who translated Sartre into English and who is probably the person most responsible for bringing existentialism to the English-speaking world. Because Hazel was a lifelong friend and mentor, I dedicated my book on Sartre and psychoanalysis to her. I want to start with one particular, actually I'll just talk about one particular insight from, from Sartre that impacts our therapy and talk with you about how that works. I'd also like to say that we do have some other influences on AEP, and I'll talk about those in later videotapes. But this time, I want to concentrate on existentialism, and I want to concentrate on this one particular insight. The insight is that we are free without excuses. We are free without excuses. What that means is not that we're trying to blame ourselves, but really that we want to reclaim the fact that it's we who create our lives. It's we who live our lives. It's we who are the agents. And where we don't feel like we're in charge of our lives, where we don't feel like it's us who are, are doing it, we want to reclaim our freedom and be able to make some different choices if the choices that we're making are not working so well for us. This doesn't mean that we're denying that the circumstances in our lives have an impact on us. They obviously do. Our socioeconomic status, our, our cultural heritage, our hist personal history, our childhood, all that has an impact. In fact, Freedom would have no meaning if it weren't freedom lived in a particular circumstance. However, what we're interested in doing is seeing how we make those choices and their gut level choices. I want to say that when we talk about choice, when we talk about freedom, we're not necessarily talking about the rational, uh, deliberative kind of choice. We're talking more about the, uh, the whole of us, our bodily oriented way of being in the world and how that is a choice. It's a gut level choice. It's not um, um, a thought out choice. In fact, you're probably aware that a lot of the time you're thinking about something and what you actually do can be in conflict. That what you think you ought to do, for example, maybe I think I ought to lose weight or I think I ought to uh, be better, be more kind and compassionate, and yet I find myself doing something different from that. It's the part of me that's actually doing it that we're interested in. That's the part that's making the choice. And sometimes we'll even do a dialogue between those two parts. The part of me that thinks I ought to be a certain way which probably has a history, it may have a history in my family, and the part of me that's actually doing something else. That's the place where the change can pl take place. The change can take place if I get in touch with what it is that I'm actually experiencing, and then I have more respect for those choices. I understand them better, and I'm able to do something different. In the course of that, I may discover some uneasy things, though. I may, if I'm really making 
a, a radical change in my way of living my life in, in the world. Say before I've been kind of mousy and compliant and I've, you know, uh, not been willing to confront people or I've not been willing to say what my needs are. Maybe I have a history where that wasn't okay in my family. And I start to change that. At the moment when I start to change that, I'm likely to have an experience that we refer to as existential anxiety. I suddenly don't know the person that I'm about to become. I suddenly feel like I can't feel the ground beneath my feet anymore. I don't know who I am. Clients say, I feel weird. I feel strange. Um, I don't know who this is anymore. So at those moments, it may be a sign that we're making a really profound shift and change. And we do want a therapist who understands that. We do want a therapist who can support us and guide us through that process. Otherwise, it can be very frightening. Uh, we may go back to the old way of being just because it's more comfortable. And so what we really want is somebody who can support us as we go through the process of change. Somebody who can support us in exploring what our choices are currently to see how they make sense and maybe they made sense way back there in the distant past and how perhaps that's not what we want to continue to do. That's not how we want to continue to be in the world. So AEP is a lot about getting out of the boxes that we've created for ourselves. It's a lot about recovering our spontaneity, our creativity, our freedom.